Davey, where the hell have you brought me this time? Last year we're at a cinema, I'm right in the middle of a field now, I thought things were going to get better between us. Well, I tell you, take out your comfort zone, your Timberland boots, your Harris scarf. <laughs> <laughs> here we are in a point of fine field. The only rules here, Fran, are keep the red flag to your right, white flag to the left. This is the playground where all the horses start off, young horses learn their trade. Um, so I just said I'd bring you here and give you a little bit of a, a view on what us poor national hunt jockeys have to face into. Not like you flat lads where you go in, sit down, get your cups of tea, get your boots put, put on for you and taken <laughs> off for you. We have to come out here in the muck and the winter and the wind and the rain and jump these fences. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm freezing. I'm used to indulging on Friday night, but I'm not staying here any longer. What's the plan? Point of points have changed now from when I started, so come on, I'm going to surprise you with a little cup of tea. Last time you'd want them, O'Leary sacked you. <laughs> Well, friend, did you enjoy that walk around the point of point course? Good to get back and see how things are done on the grassroots, if you like, Dave. But uh, I'm absolutely freezing. We've had a walk around the track, a muddy field, and uh, I'm hungry. Come on. <laughs> You're kidding me. I'll be real honest <laughs> with you, lad. Come on. I have something really special. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Tell you what, Davey. Mildly surprised now. Um, that second day at school, it's not a bad one. Yeah, we're reaching second base. I have the room booked upstairs, Fran. Where uh, <laughs> Barberstown Castle is only the best for you. Well, after that trip in the horse box. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get right into it. We have the scones, we have the tea. We've been well, very well, well looked after. Um, first race, Fairy House, January. Wall of Fame, Jordan Gainford. So he jumps out, he's slow away from the tapes. Jordan is on the pump the whole way down to the first. He sees a nice stride and Wall of Fame just lets him down. Jordan does the sensible thing. He doesn't panic. Again, mi kept missing hurdles along the way. Horse not helping him. Jordan, different stages of the race, you know, has to get down and, you know, get busy on this fella. But to be fair to the horse, he responds for him. So we're down to the second last here. Now it's getting nice and tight. Now Richie's not giving him an inch on the outside. Uh, Jack has his path blocked in front of him. And again, scrapes paint off the rail and lets him down again. I missed that completely. Yeah, it just, it just has given him no help from, <laughs> from flagfall. But Jordan now sees the opportunity to come out from the rail. The horse allows, allows him to come out down to the last, pricks his ears, gets a reasonably okay jump. Still has a length and a half, two lengths to make up. Horse is pricking his ears. He's still not giving him everything that he has. We saw last year's winner, Young Dev, coming to throw down his challenge. Again, the horse all the way up to the line, not helping Jordan, and Jordan doing the right thing the whole, the whole way to the line, keeping the revs up and goes and wins the race. I just thought it was a brilliant ride from a young jockey. My first nomination is Siobhan Rutledge winning the Ulster Oaks at Down Royal mid-June. Young Clem and Ryder riding at a week. And we'll pick it up here out of stalls. She's in the pink cap and the purple colours coming out of stall number three. Just missed the start here. He's on the back foot. Mile and a quarter down Royal, a short run to the first bend. Down to that seven furlong gate. There's a real rush on. I just thought she never panicked on this filly. She tends to travel well, but when she tries one or two on one or two occasions through the race, Siobhan, she stayed in rather than go out, which down Royal, as you know, you start getting out five furlongs out, you're going to lose the race, you'll be too wide. There's a point here, she may well have swung right out and try and get out as a consequence though, you're going to end up four, five, six wise, even if she does get out. Instead, Siobhan took her medicine, waited until her rivals were straightened up when she gets the gap there. Still a bit of work to do here now. A lot of work, and look at the way she is with her whip and her movement here, using her hands, cajoling the filly along, didn't panic that's what I like about the whole ride it was a ride of composure something you like seeing a senior rider let alone a five pound claim great to see from a young rider Davey for your second pick you're going for Mark Walsh riding a great few at the Punchtown Festival what's so good about this? this is kind of you know AP-esque um, Mark is a beautiful rider he's in the JP colours with the green hat and the white star. From a long way out, Mark is not travelling as said, he's only jumping okay, but halfway down the, down the back he makes a decision. He gets out for daylight and a bit of space. Is that it? somebody's thinking that might just reinvigorate his horse? Exactly, and that's the beauty of the ride. And then, when he does that, he has the other problem of getting there too soon. Mm. On a horse that is a little bit idle, you know, he wears cheek pieces. It's been four years. He won this race four years ago. 
So, you know, it's, he's trained locally by Dennis Cullen. Mm -hmm. And Mark is, you know, he's got the horse to travel down the back, but he doesn't want to overdo it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get there too early and get in the battle. And it's just fine, fine lines. And I think he's just executed them really, really well. Mark smells there's something left there, whereas it doesn't visually look like it. Mm. Uh, but he knows, he knows best. And he's gone and really got stuck into him. Good and brave down to the last, never lost momentum, gets the job done going away. I just thought it was a lovely ride from one of the country's top, top jockeys. It's a great view and Mark Walsh is surging with the three mile Conway piling handicap. So here we go, Fran, your second pick, Treasure Trove, up the Curra, straight six. Billy Lee, fighting out championship with Colin Keane. This Philly treasure trove, trained by Paddy Toomey, will be coming out of stall number eight. There she goes into the stalls. I said pre-race, this Philly can't win. She won't get the trip. She did win, and she only won because of the ride that Billy Lee gave her in the day. You see him here, he's still traveling. What are his options? Billy's traveling really well, but he only wants to be in front, on the line or close line, given her stamina limitations. He's fully running at this point in time, going to the front pole, he switches out. He's getting a taunt race off Shane Foley on the near side, but look across, you got Colin Keane, Chris Hayes are quicking up in the blue colours. They're balancing three horses, he's got to go and beat three, and it ultimately his biggest danger is beside him. So he's had to quicken, not get, in, not get into a trap to go and challenge the two horses on the far side. He's got to bear in mind that Shane Foley's probably going to be best in the line. He waits, commits in the last 50 hours, and he wins. He hit the bullseye there. Unbelievable. Davey, your third pick, another festival, Galway, the crowds are back, the place is rocking, seen a returning hero, Tudor City, trained by Tony Martin, he'd won the race in the past, I thought he was gone, he puts up a jockey I hadn't seen in track in months, Lee McKenna. Yeah, there's loads to take from this, uh, fast ground, Galway festival, <laughs> one of the most valuable handicaps of the year, um, he's there on the inside with the green body, uh, whitish cap, for the colours of John Breslin. This is Liam's first ride back since dislocating his shoulder in the Grand National, mm. which is back in April. Needs to be fit. He's heading into a Galway Festival. Things happen very fast around there. You need to be on the, on the ball. He's down the inside, green colours, yellow sleeves, uh, sheepskin noseband. He has got the ideal posse out the gate. He's down the inside, but he still has room, which is very important. Fully committed down to the last. Brian Cooper has gone on to go and win his race, but Liam has well in his sights and again all the way to the line up against the hill in Galway big crowd you know he's going to be after having a blow after that he even gets time to sleep with the crowd I thought it was a great ride now out of a, out of a you know when something like that comes off I think it's just maverick OK Davy, third and final selection over six my last one Waterville the Irish Tsar which 30 runners got a huge injection of prize money this year it was a good a staying handicap as we've seen for a while Wayne Lord winning at Waterville gets to vote. Where is he drawn here, Fran? Does that make a big difference? It makes a big difference, yeah. First time they've used stalls for 30 runners at the Curra over this trip. He's drawn in stall 18. Not ideal. I'd rather be in than out, if that makes sense. Yeah. But where he's drawn doesn't matter. As you pick it up at the stalls, Waterville's one of the slow starters. He's around a three-year-old, lightweight. I'm sure Wayne in his head would like to be handy. First six, eight. Instead, he ends up third last. Based on the first five strides, yeah. it's game over as far yeah. as he in his own head. All the way through the race, nothing's going right. Easiest thing in the world would be at this point, look, he's half off the bridle, he's dead last 30 runners, and he just makes every call the right one, if that makes sense. And it's because he's not afraid to get beaten or be seen to put the horse into the race yes. just to please somebody else, bar himself and the horse. Fran, with two furlongs to go, he has. 12 or 15 horses in front of him. How is this horse going to win? He wins and he just gets up in a dying stride and he, okay, he switched out, he gets daylight, but at the 100 metre mark, he's got three lengths to make up and race to Blackmore in the green colours. Davy Waterville did not win, want to win this race. He doesn't help Wayne, but he got him going. That's some feeling. When plan A, plan B and plan C have gone and you still get past the line. So Fran, we can only have one winner. Six marvellous rides from six brilliant jockeys. Uh, where can people go to vote? Three flat rides, three excellent rides, Davey. I think we're going to win it this year, but we leave it to the public. HRI.ie and the winners will be announced on December the 5th at the HRI Awards. Now, Fran, 
let's tuck into these scones. Thank you. Not like a free lunch, David. You've got no such thing, Frank. Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh...